Hey, good morning everyone. It's Louise Moriarty, poet, storyteller, shamanic sage. Today I've got a little story from you straight from my dreams into your heart. Let it guide the evolution of the planet. Walking down the village road, she saw the quaint building that housed the entrance to the underground caves. When she arrived, a funny curly-haired man was seated at the entrance looking through the pamphlets at the side door. They greeted each other formally and caught up on village news. She suggested he go take a break and soak up some of the crystal's loving energy. It was only one door and a brisk walk down the hall where one could enter the river. This was not the pilgrim's entrance, but when the hours were early, this door was open to allow the locals access. Once inside, the dull glow of the luminescence lighted the natural creek sandbars and banks. The living walls were man-made, but the recent nanotechnology gave off the comforting feel of a living system. She walked down to him, both reciting in harmonic chants telepathically the gratitude poem for the heart of the earth's power rising up to meet them. She returned to the station and the elegance of the Vastu design embraced her in a vibration of nurturing. People hardly ate anymore as the newly reformed environments gave off the calming particles that delivered most of the minerals and ions that the body needed. As they relaxed onto the chair, as she relaxed onto the chair, through the translucent self-breathing skin of her clothing, her body could absorb minerals through the furniture, which revitalised itself through the earth's very nutrient-rich top layer. As soon as the majority of people on the planet had realised their power, an overarching campaign had been mounted to focus on the good, to put all their energy, both physical resources and mental intentions, into visioning and creating a world where the things that were working were amplified. So many new inventions had been fast-tracked and unusually all the effects for seven generations had been brainstormed, guessed and watched for. Like gardens, soon the caretakers of this planet that was once on the brink of destruction realised that they could harness the weather with their thoughts. Major programs of anger were released and restructuring cooled down some of the hottest spots. Praise circles were directed to focus on places where animosity and fighting had left intergenerational scars. No person was left without resources, which meant a friend or family member trained in deep time listening. The echoes of previous pain and loss were recognised, felt and turned to fertiliser for new ways or interconnected generations to evolve. The understanding that we are all mirrors for each other and in the listening that what we were before, what we made before from judgments, we could now make into a greater power to search for that effect in ourselves and unravel its making from the depths of our heart intelligence. The girl sat, rested and regained her centred wandering happily down the hall every now and then to see what the boy was doing. He had seated himself on a small sandbank where the tunnel wove in a meandering bend and was collecting crystals and creating a mandala around himself. As he chuckled, he was visioning and pulling in the dream of his destiny, his heart song. Occasionally she would raise her floral flowing skirts inlaid with embroideries of insects and birds she loved the most and wade into the water taking hold of a particular crystal that attracted her attention. Immediately on touching the water, deep resources, resonance overcame her, and then she would skip over to his island, or using her avatar hand signals, wave in the water to direct the crystals downstream to his island. Suddenly, she looked back in a small release of an island of crystals, of greens and turquoise, interweaving of interconnections. She recognised it as a morphic field, embedded as each generation had been sloughing off old notions of how the health world worked the earth's crystal core that was programmed with the powerful creative charges for each old mindset had been releasing layers of embedded interrelated thought patterns which had grown these delightful clusters of crystals it startled the boy the force with which her thoughts nudged him to reach out and anchor this small delicate boat on his island she knew the elders would have to, with alchemy, transmute the inherent particles that had been formed and formulised by these bunches of ideas being linked together over time. She shrieked and went to ride a large quartz crystal down the rapid, 
Its ends were like a hand guiding the way they built a castle around him. They suddenly realised what was occurring. They were witnessing the dismantling of the entire old paradigm. These tall crystals, although beautiful, were the mainframe of what had become of love. A desire to be useful, a fear of unworthiness which translated into giving the body away, not as a temple, but as a shrine for the other to bow down to and put on a pedestal over and above spirit. This was the old ways, dissolving. Without a word, they formally dropped all of their soul into their heart centre, where they were fully connected and yet imbued with their gift in a concertina of past and present. They rapidly embodied the crystalline structure of the crystal and through their own coming into love and their own heart song, the crystal reformed with ancient and futuristic coordinates of the planet's origin of heaven on earth and its destiny. They went back to their work and realised that they had been up-leveled. Both knew they had been messengers, but now realised that they were alchemistical elders and every day through their limited actions they must remain anchored in their hearts in the metaphysical to reorder their visioning of the world and others' actions to realign to divine diversity. This was their destiny. The wisdom of nothing to be done and all attention to be focused suddenly took on a depth of subtlety. She returned to her chair, just as one of the pioneers was leaving for his pod. The pioneers were not like the elders. They had an earthliness that was musky and practical. They were the troubleshooters and went in and gave hope where hope was lost. She recognised something of herself in this one, approaching him with an irreverence that was not lost on him in this sanctified place. Her joy was palpable, but it was her eyes that arrested him. Although he was motivated by a charge of great divine knowing that was activated by seasonal pressures, this bigger time cycle was not even in his creative awareness. She, always a pioneer, had somehow melded the charge of the alchemists, a seedling and a flowering fruit. The pioneers planted the seeds of vision and actions of hope in consciousness. The changing nature that their metaphysical crystal work manifested in the environments and domains of the human species, integrating themselves back into the biosphere. This was a joy to him, but he knew the time was coming to activate greater power by finding his likeling. A likeling was so simple. It was one who liked you, a friend who could see their own reflection in your shadow and saw the companion power of walking your journey alongside. Although your paths could alter radically, always a link back to the story of your heart song guided you to the power of the other as your muse for guidance and inspiration. As they stood in the humble embrace, they both felt new things stirring, visions of possibilities through the other side of the repair and out into the heaven that earth was to become. Some were predestined to choose light bodies they had come from, others Homes. Some were predestined to choose light bodies they had come from other homes and they were certain to return after the restoration was complete. Others, like these two, would hold the sacred balance in their union and their ability to understand and hold thought forms. More than that, their playfulness would create celebrations and unions. They knew how nature's cycles grew and knew the place of the homo luminous in the complete creation. Something passed between them, hardly discernible to them, and their union was complete. He was amazed that one as gifted as her was not being paid for her work. Therefore, he didn't know her transformation was only newly complete. She said from the frame of reference of a human encounter, I can give you my number, and when a job comes up, let me know. He took her number and continued out into the world, outside of the veil, neither fully realising what had occurred but all shaken and affected by the daydream they had had as part of just another day on the mundane planet. This is a part of some dream that I had last night and um, in the next part of the dream the girl goes into the lecture hall and the Barbara Harvards and Patricias are in there teaching the elders and the ancient ones how to power up the people on the planet. 
So thanks for yesterday. It was an amazing session. I really look forward to catching up with you all, figuring out how to be on the interactive part of the sessions. I'm down in Chugan, Australia, where the ocean is flat and calm and the mackerel and dart and the fish are schooling around and the dolphins are rounding them up. And I feel so blessed to be here and to be a part of this hub. So thank you for sharing my dream journey with me and um, lots of love and gratitude to all of you.